There's many different ways price can be reversed, and I prefer to use SNTs and also use liquidity sweeps. And in this video, I will show you which ICT concept, in my opinion, is best, and also how you can use both ICT concepts. First, I'm going to give you a short recap on both these ICT concepts, but I do expect that you know the simple understanding of both of them, as I've made a video about both of the ICT concepts. Now, the first thing that we're going to talk about is liquidity sweep. And liquidity sweep is when price sweeps a low, and then immediately pull back into the range again. And to get an understanding of what a run on liquidity is, is that price runs out a low, meaning that price, when taking out that low, does not show any form of pullback into the range again, it just runs lower. And we also usually see if a value gap get created in the meantime when price runs that low. So that's the difference between liquidity sweep and also a run on liquidity. And just to make it a bit more interesting, let's go down into a lower time frame and see what happened within this week that made the sweep on liquidity. The reason I want to move down here on the lower time frame is because usually when we see on the higher time frame that price sweeps liquidity, then that turns out to be on the lower time frame trap shorts or a balanced price range or just a higher probability inversion for value gap. And we can see right here that we do indeed have trap shorts as we have fast sell side delivery and then first buy side delivery again. And also we have several fair value gaps, and when we have several fair value gaps that could be an inversion fair value gap, then we move up, move up to the higher time frame or go up to the next time frame, which is the two minute time frame, so then find a singular fair value gap to be inversed. On the two minute time frame, we can indeed see we have this right here. What do we see price do? Price made a retracement a trade entry could be placed, put our stop loss beneath these, this low, as trap shorts should be beneath here, and we should not see price make a return to this low. And then we want to target higher prices, and we can indeed see we have some LRLR, right? So then we can target the high, and let's see what happens. And we can indeed see that price runs this high after making a retracement into this low again. So that's how we can use higher time frame sweep on liquidity to our advantage on the lower time frame to then frame a trade entry. A quick bearish example on this sweep on liquidity could be, for example, right here, where we can see we have a BPR right within here. And if we extend that out, we can see that price returned into this BPR three times. And the first time we can see price swept this high, made a pullback. After that, again, swept the current high that we just went. As we can see, price swept the high and then from there moved lower. And that's something that we usually see is that when price reaches a important level where a reversal could be anticipated or just a fair value gap in general, we can usually see price make manipulation legs within that fair value gap. And then price could sweep that high or that manipulation leg and then return into the opposite direction. And we could indeed see first price or the first time price made the retracement into this BPR, price swept the high, made a pullback, reaching this low, swept this low, again, moved higher, swept this high that was just made within this BPR, from there, move lower, and we can see price then runs out liquidity. So that's also another way we can use sweep on liquidity. Another way we can find a reversal is by using a SMT. And a SMT happens between two correlated pairs. And it's basically when price makes a lower low and the other pair makes a higher low. As usually when price are trading correlated pairs, or when we have correlated pairs, price is trading in the same direction. But then sometimes price could, let's say on the NASDAQ, make a lower low, but then on ES, price could make a higher low. And when price creates this SMT, then that's where a reversal is anticipated. A bullish example of this would be right here, where we can see on the left, we have the NASDAQ, and on the right, we have the S&P 500. And on the NASDAQ, 
we can see that price is moving lower. And then price makes a higher low compared to this low over here. But then on the S&P 500, we can see price is also moving lower, but then price makes a lower low compared to this low. And that creates a SMT. And when price creates this SMT, we can indeed see, as we just talked about before, that price is starting to reverse from there, moving higher. And if we were to take a trade entry, we can see that we have a IFEG right here. Price makes a clean retracement, runs buy side liquidity. Same over here. Price creates this IFEG, but sadly we can see price fail to make a retracement. But both pairs run out liquidity after creating that SMT. When we are trading a high time frame SMT on the lower time frame, then I prefer to wait for a confirmation before I start taking trade entries. Compared to when we see a liquidity sweep, that's where we can immediately go down into a lower time frame and see that price is now bullish after sweeping liquidity. But when we're trading high time frame, SMTs, that's why I prefer to wait for a confirmation before anticipating higher prices from that higher time frame SMT. And an example of this could be right here, where we can see that price just created that one hour SMT on both the S&P 500 and on the NASDAQ. And at the current moment, if we let's say we are looking at price from here, then we cannot see that price is willing to respect this SMT. So then we can wait for a confirmation, such as a market structure shift. As we can see, we had that on both pairs, right? And then when we have that market structure shift, that's where we now can wait for a trend entry, such as this Favelli gap right here, or this Favelli gap up here. So that's something that we have to notice when trading high time frame SMTs. And on the S&P 500, we can also indeed see that we got that market structure shift as a confirmation after creating that SMT. From there, we can see that price is now offering our, us trade entries, such as this inversion for value gap. And then from there, price just moves higher, running out by side liquidity on both pairs. A bearish example of this SMT is that over here on the left, we can see price swept this high and over here on the right we can see on the S&P 500 price failed to sweep this high but then we can see price was not that bearish it just returned into a Fibonacci gap that was not even within the discount as we can see right here on both pairs and then right after that it swept that high again what could be the reason for this well first of all it could be that price was bullish in this example and it was not willing to reverse from this area and a reason for that could be because we had a draw on liquidity that was higher for example we had a lot of, lot of LR LR up here and same over here so that's something that we have to keep an eye on when trading these SMTs is that if it's not trading with our bias then the SMT could just be invalid after returning into a Favaldi gap that is not even within a discount, and then from there just move higher in the bias direction or towards a higher time frame draw on liquidity. When it comes to the conclusion, I don't think there's one ICT concept that is better than the other one, but I do prefer to use liquidity sweep more than SMT. And the reason behind this is because when we're looking at a liquidity sweep, we don't really need that much confirmation as we saw in the first example, where on the four hour time frame price sweep the sell side liquidity and then we could just move down into the lower time frame where we can see that all it took was price disrespecting various PDRAs and a simple market structure shift from there price just start running out liquidity and taking out our drawn liquidity which was low resistance liquidity compared to the SMT that, we, that I just showed you in the recent example where we can see it only took a bullish Fibonacci gap that was within a premium, so then push price higher. And there could, of course, also be other reasons behind this. But when I'm looking at SMTs, I usually want to have a bit more confirmation to it, such as maybe this Favoli gap this getting disrespected. 
but of course it could also be good to have more confirmation as then the bias becomes more clear and also the draw on liquidity. And when the bias and the draw on liquidity becomes more clear, then we could be more secured within our trade entry. And that is also very good. So the conclusion is that one ST concept is not better than the other one, but one requires more confirmation than the other one.